Curveball is a simple running gun side scroll, has amazing gunplay, a pretty cool soundtrack, and a ton of variety in game modes. It's just a lot of fun through and through. In Cobalt, there's a small robot from Earth, actually named Cobalt, whose job is to go to the planet Trancopia to investigate what's behind a stress call from the humans on the planet. Almost 50 years have passed, and Cobalt has finally made it to Trancopia by way of a spaceship. He immediately then goes down to the planet's surface to then find an abandoned Borealis security office. As he trudges forward through the snowy landscape, he encounters a field shroom, who calls himself the Time Guard, who tells Cobalt to be wary of the robots as they have gone hostile. Cobalt then makes his way to a Borealis station that is controlled by said robots, who are immediately hostile towards Cobalt, of course. It's up to Cobalt to find out what has happened to Trunkopia. Cobalt's story mode is interesting to say the least, and it's fully fleshed out in terms of plot. The report stored in the ship's computer that predate the game's beginning and gives some background to the game's setting and story. Which is pretty cool for a game that doesn't boast its story as one of the headlining features. Apart from going for the story itself in story mode, Cobalt can go back to his quarters and dance to some awesome tunes on his radio. And, as the game progresses, there are many games of sorts that reward Cobalt with energy that can, he can use to buy new weapons or gear, or upgrade the gear that he already has. These challenges take form of time challenges that Cobalt will then have to roll and dash his way to the finish line to get a better time and more energy. The story mode is pretty cool. Going through it and building up Cobalt as I slowly went through the story was an aspect that I found pretty awesome. And that the story mode is indeed fully fleshed out and impresses me. The only actual gripe I have with it though is that it can be awfully difficult towards the beginning unless the game is played perfectly and Cobalt doesn't die. And the AI, especially the friendly AI, can be quite annoying at times. It is often that friendly fuse rooms would go aggro as I roll past them. But oddly enough, a shop owner couldn't have cared less as I stole gems from his locked chest. It's not bad bad, as these scenarios are few and far between, a callback will be shooting at things 90% of the times anyway. And of course, the story mode isn't the only mode in the game. Apart from the story mode, there are arcade style modes that can be played alone and or with bots with some friends on the couch, or there's even online multiplayer. There's a challenge mode, which is the same thing as speed challenges in the story mode, but separate from it. There's also a deathmatch mode, where that can be played alone with some bots to kill or with some friends. A team strike mode that has two teams battled out to the death in rounds, which in between rounds, new gear and weapons can be bought and upgraded, also a pug swam mode which is pretty much captured the flag, and a survival mode in which a person or persons can fight waves of enemies. There's a variety of game modes here, so there's a lot of cobalt to be played. With all the different game modes, including the story mode, it's hard to get bored playing cobalt. The gameplay for Cobalt is quite interesting, as it mixes first person shooting mechanics and Castlevania like 2D side scrolling action. There are a variety of guns that can be used, but ultimately to style of how Cobalt fights at the, that's the headlining bit. Cobalt can roll, jump, slide, sneak, dunk, stick to walls, throw grenades, and max into the melee weapon. The concepts of combat in Cobalt can be quite difficult to manage at first, but after a while it just feels natural. There's also a bullet time mechanic where when a bullet is fired directly at Cobalt, time slows down, allowing Cobalt to maneuver out of the way or to roll or punch the bullet back to the center. The gunplay in Cobalt is pretty fun, especially once getting used to its quirks. Controls, at least on a controller, are quite intuitive and it's not out of the way to pull off cool stunts during a heated battle. Cobalt's art style isn't much. It's a simple 2D side scroller that makes for the intended experience for the sake of the gameplay but leaves a lot to be desired in the graphics department. Everything is identifiable, the game plays smoothly on Xbox One, but with the unique concept and gunplay, the graphics really don't bother me as they are simply to carry game, not beat a game. The sound design pulls off a Retrotron-like thing in both the sounds of the weapons and the soundtrack. Weapons give off either a pew pew or a loud thump, depending on the type of weapon it is. And the soundtrack gives away tracks of 80s S electronica on the main menu and on the radio but has a more rustic and runway vibe and tracks of play when in the game. It's nothing to write home about, but there were one or two tracks that made me just want to get up and dance for a while. Any fan of electronic music and apocalyptic like tracks will feel right at home with the Cobalt soundtrack. Cobalt is a game to be played simply for the means of blowing off steam and having some fun for a while. It's not going to make everyone go ooh and ah like Minecraft. 
but a wave gamer satisfied, and there's a lot of replay value here. There's quite a bit of content to fit the price, and it can really be played any time for a good experience. From the story mode to all the other different modes, there's a lot of stuff to play and have fun with in Cobalt. Oh,